Cut the music. Cut the music. There we go. We're there. We're live. We're late today. We're late. Welcome back, everyone. Um, in less than an hour, we'll be on the main show on KBS Live over on TFR Live. But I just had to get my daily fix. Yes, indeed. I'm over here to talk to you about some strange life forms at the bottom of the planet. Even stranger than me, before any of you say it out there. I, I know what you're like. I know what you're like, but before we go anywhere, a big shout out to ZX, Donny, um, Mammoth. Good to see you, Mammoth. Very good to see you. Um, well, it's usually in lurk mode for our pre-show stream. We're very honoured today. We got the Cine Monk. We got Polly, Tinkerbell, Celtic Cousin. How you doing there? Um, Donny, I think I done Bearded. Who was first today? Bearded was first. Moron second. Connie third. But I think they were all beaten by my one loyal hater. I tell you, the instant I go and set a live stream, within seconds, boom, thumb down. I just want to thank that person because you really, you really help the algorithm. I mean, before even the alert goes out to our subscribers, you're there. You're loyally hating me. And I can't thank you enough for it. So if that's you out there, know that you have a special warm place in my heart. Why? Because I know that's going to annoy you more than anything. And talking of strange life forms, like the things that thumb people down, well, wait till you see some of the things that we've got to look at today. Now, yesterday I mentioned a quick story about life forms that had been discovered at the bottom of the world, Antarctica. It's one of our favourite places to talk about, and we're going to take a better look at these life forms that they have discovered today and then we're going to take a look at some random life forms around the planet things that will make you go "Ooh, what the heck so i hope this will warm everyone up for what is going to be a complete woo fest over on the main show today i've got stuff from tesla i've got creepy stories about ai i have got lots of stuff about dybbuk boxes um and also, if we've got time, I'm going to open up the phones for you to phone in with your creepy stories. The creepier, the better. The scarier, the happier I'll be. So that's all to come in less than one hour on TFRlive.com on the Kev Baker Show. So let's get into these life forms that they've discovered at the bottom of the world. Yes, indeed. Are there any more life forms lurking down there? It's an open question, folks. It's a I provide, you decide type question. So it says here, mysterious life forms have been found in the hostile darkness beneath Antarctica. Why am I so excited about a story about these little beasties so far below the ice? Well, because in my mind, for what it's worth, this improves our chances of finding life elsewhere in the solar system and beyond. Because life, ladies and gentlemen, has a habit of finding a way. It's resilient, and it can survive and thrive in conditions that our scientists would scra scratch their heads at. That's only because we're not open-minded enough to really appreciate not only the life forms that we see here on Earth, but other types of life forms as well. We are carbon-based life forms. What about any other type of life forms that may be out there in the solar system or beyond. Does that make them any more or less conscious and sentient than us? All stuff for you to ponder at the start of the stream, I'm telling you. So I'm not going to read through all this article, but it comes from Science Alert. It's got some of the photographs of some of these beasties we're going to be talking about. And like I say, we're going to take a look at some other strange life forms around the planet before we head on over to KBS Live. And I can tell you folks, I've got a big guest lining up to come on the show. They've got a documentary coming out in the next month that is bound to cause major controversy. And they're going to be coming on the Kev Baker show in the next couple of weeks. I'm not going to announce the name just yet because I don't have the date shored up, but it's going to be a biggie. A real biggie. So anyway, talking of biggies, what's beneath the ice? Well, oh, and before I start, before I start, I better warn you all right now. 
Miss Anne is going to come to the door because she's on late shift today. So I might need to break away, run, open the door, come back. See the things I do? See the things I do just to get my little fix with all of you. I'm telling you. So anyway, says the water below Antarctica are amongst the most inhospitable environments on our planet. Or so we thought. It's pitch dark. It's temperatures are sub-zero. Yet, when scientists drilled through an Antarctic ice shelf, far from light or warmth, they found a seafloor boulder that's home to several species we may never have seen before. A few of the organisms have been seen in similar locations, but this discovery marks the first time stationary creatures um, that live their lives attached to one place, such as sponges, have been found in this hostile environment. And it says this discovery is one of the, those fortunate accidents that pushes ideas in a different direction and shows us that Antarctic marine life is incredibly special and amazingly adapted to a frozen world. And if it can adapt to that frozen world, can it adapt to somewhere like Europa? The moon around Jupiter. I think it's a Jupiter moon. Might be a Saturn moon. Jupiter, I think. I think. But if we take a look here, this is the boulder that they're talking about, okay? And we come down and we start to see these weird looking things. Like little barnacles hanging off. Like little whiskers even hanging off the, the rock. And the fact that they can even live down there, survive and thrive, it's mind boggling folks. It's truly mind boggling. It says most life on earth relies on the sun for survival. Photosynthesis is at the very bottom of the food chain with organisms such as plants and algae using sunlight to make sugars and other organisms making either plants or the organisms that eat plants or the organisms that eat the organisms that eat plants and so on and so on. Now that whole photosynthesis thing, I'm going to go sci-fi for you in a moment. You know, we've got a lot of people that are looking into augmenting the human body right now, right? Biohacking, you know, you can get your, your CRISPR kits, pretty much dirt cheap. And um, we are entering a world where people are going to start augmenting their biology. Um, whether it's taking on bionic limbs, some kind of bionic vision. But one thing I've always wondered about is... I've always kind of not been jealous. I've not looked at a plant and thought I'm really jealous. But I need to go for a minute, folks, because I need to go because there she is. I'll be back. So I was just about to woo you all with my sci-fi speculation. It's probably given you enough time to think about where the hell's Kev going with this? Well, when are we going to see our first person that adapts themselves to be able to photosynthesize? Can you imagine that? Is it something that's in our future? Just something for you to ponder, something for you to think about. But we're going to take a look at these life forms elsewhere now. Other strange life forms. But before I do that, before I do that, let's come into the crowd, shall we? Let's come into the chat room. I want to ask the chat room, what else do you think lies beneath the ice in Antarctica? What else do you think is down there? Sure, we're talking about microbes and little beasties right now, but what else do you think is down there? Come on, what do you think? And do you think I'm crazy by saying... That in the future, there's going to be somebody that tweaks their DNA so that they can photosynthesize. I don't even know if it's scientifically possible, but it's a good sci-fi idea, right? Plant man. Call me Twiggy. You know? You've got problems. 
Um, you get problems. ZX, I know I've got problems, brother. <laughs> oh, I've got serious problems. Um, so who else we got in here? We got Whispering Eye. Um, some shrooms can help with that. Polly is our um, shroom expert. Yes, indeed. Let's see. What else are people saying? Aliens. Scowling Wolf thinks there might be aliens under the ice. Scowling Wolf. When I look at these things, these are almost alien, right? I mean, it's crazy that anything... That's like an alien world down there. Literally an untouched or semi-untouched alien world. But yeah, is there pyramids under there? Is there UFOs? Who knows, folks? Donnie, a hint of the origin of life. I like that. I like it. Donnie's our Australian friend. Big shout out to our Australian contingent. They're strong in here today. I think it's the opening to Argartha, says Mammoth Hunter. Oof. Then we're getting into some Admiral Bird type woo there. Great stories. Great stories. I'll need to dig up the Admiral Bird um, stuff one night. We'll do an Inner Earth special. I think Scotty Lopez and um, Kevin Nacy would be up for a bit of that, I would imagine. The Tartarian Submarine. Wow. Now, Weapon, I agree with you. If Cthulhu is anywhere, if Cthulhu is anywhere, then it's going to be down there. And Whisper and I, I think you might be right. Moby <laughs> might be down there. It might be. It might be. And that weather, though, that cold. Yeah. Probably talking about Moby's shrimp, I would imagine. The reluctant hero, what's up? What's up to you, man? Good to see you. Don't be so reluctant. The world needs a hero right now, right? I could feel, I could, I could feel that. Wait a minute, folks. I could feel somebody breathing on the back of my neck and not in that good way you get. I'll be back. <laughs> See, just like that, I'm back, I'm back. Never good when you feel hot breath on the back of your neck, just after you've been talking about Moby Shrimp. Oh, not good, not good, not good. Especially after all those jail stories we had the other day with when we had Jimmy on as well. Jail, hot breath on the back of the neck. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a disaster. So, a, a large bottle of empty rum. Who drank it? Now, um, humans can photosynthesize given enough reservoirs of vitamin D. Do we have chlorophyll producing pores or, or excretions inside us? I think chlorophyll, isn't that the, the, the magical ingredient for photosynthesis? I, Polly, I hope you're right, dude. I, I'd love it. I'm going to start taking so much vitamin D, I'm going to start sprouting leaves. Yeah, like a panda eats shoots and leaves anyway moving on <laughs> risky anyway strange life forms found deep in a mine now we're out of the water we're into a mine now we're into land kind of dwelling beasties look at the state of these things oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy so anyway it says here something odd is stirring in the depths of canada's kid mine Polly, I hope you're nowhere near kid mine. These things look dangerous. The zinc and copper mine, 350 miles northwest of Toronto, is the deepest spot ever explored on land and the reservoir of the oldest known water. And yet, okay, so this might be in water again. And yet, 7,900 feet below the surface in perpetual darkness and in waters that have remained undisturbed for up to 2 billion years, the mine is teeming with life. Two billion years that's been untouched. Look, I'm not going all doom and gloom here, but when we're looking for things that old, is there any potential that we might take something home with us that us as a human race aren't able to cope with? Like, are there any prehistoric viruses that might come back to the surface? I don't know, I don't know, but it's something to think about. There we go, troops, there we go. See, I'm here, I'm there, I'm back, I'm forth. 
We're good to go now, though. We're good to go now, though. Um, Tinker says watery... Tinker says water holds memory. Oh, it's not that they say. It definitely does. Um, famous experiments by a doctor, Inamoto, in Japan, where um, just by basically putting water into test tubes and then sticking... For example, love on the front of one and hate on the other, and then instantly flash freezing it. When you look at it under the microscope, the one with love, it's got absolutely beautiful symmetric snow snowflake type patterns, right? But then when you put something negative on it, like hate or something like that, whoa, when you put it under the microscope, it looks as if it's all distorted, broken. So Water definitely, definitely has magical powers. And how much of the human body is made of water? How much of the human body is made of water? Let's take a quick dig into that. How much water? Body. There we go. Up to 60% of the human body is actually water. Now, we were talking last night on the show with Eric Stroman, and that's about to go up onto the Kev Baker Show 1 channel. When I get finished here, it'll be uploading during today's show. But we were talking about how energies affect us. And when we walk into a room sometimes, or when somebody walks into a room who's really negative, we feel that, oh, you get that feeling, right? The same way as you get a warm, fuzzy feeling when something good's happening. Or somebody positive walks into the room. Is that our water changing shape? Is that our water reacting to the vibes that they're giving off? That bad shaped water might, oh, is that what it makes us feel like? And then when we see somebody we love and we get that warm, kind, kind of heart feeling going on, you, you know? Is that is that when we're in the presence of somebody shaping our water in a good way? Weird woo, weird woo, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to go back to our strange beasties. Ten of the strangest. There's the first one. Now, this is where it starts. I tell you, this is where it gets really weird. So this is a cyclops shark. An extremely rare cyclops. Cyclops? Or a cyclops? Take your pick. Recently confirmed in Mexico. And is an editor's pick for one of the ten... Oddest life forms, and this was in 2011. Okay, so we'll hide the caption there. We'll, we'll go to the next one. Where is the next one? Um, okay, come on now. There we go. So, go to the next one. Right, why is it not giving me the next one? Don't, don't do this to me. Don't do this. View slideshow. Right, well, I'm on the slideshow, but how do I move forward? Aha! There we go. So what's this one? This one is the Glam Rock Chameleon. Cool name, cool name. So uh, speckled with what looks like Glam Rock makeup, this chameleon, Fursifer Timoni, was recently discovered on the species-rich African island nation of Madagascar. That's according to the World Wildlife Foundation. So if we hide that and we go to the next one. Now, come on. There we go. There we go. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I'm guessing Australia because you have got some crazy spiders down there, man. So along came the albino spider and it shocked scientists in Australia. What can I say? I nearly fell over when I saw its white head. It, its hairy legs would have done it for me. So it says the newest or the new found trapdoor spider isn't a true albino since it still has some pigment. Its body is brown like those of the other trapdoor species. 1.2 inches. Holy shimoli. Oh, it might not sound like much, but I'm telling you. Wow. Um, <laughs> Arachnid has been dubbed the albino trapdoor spider until it's formally described as a new species. It's terrifying. Look at it. That thing needs to be hit with one iron shoes right now. There we go. Whoa. Whoa. 
What's this thing? So this here is a demon bat. Meet the new prince of the underworld, the Beelzebub bat. Who knew? Demon bat. Wow. I bet it's a nice timid little thing as well. Named for its diabolic coloration, the recently discovered bat has a black head and dark back fur. Surely, yeah. Both which contrast sharply with the flyer's whitish belly, scientists reported in a September study. What's next? Oh, no. Now I have to go back to try and bloody find the bit to click on again. There we go. Ah, now we're getting it. What is that? It looks like it's got the antlers of a stag, doesn't it? That's bizarre. A mind control fungus. Do they call it MK Ultra? A stock of the new fungus species. Oh, Polly. Fun guy. You're my fun guy. Fun guy. Um, okay. Ophiocordyceps Camponotti Balzani. Sounds like somebody that should be playing football for uh, AC Milan. Grows out of a zombie ant's head in a Brazilian rainforest. Well, it's Brazilian, it probably can play football. Originally thought to be a single species. Species. It's called the... Uh, we'll just call it Big, Big Ollie. <laughs> the fungus is actually four distinct species, all of which can mind control ants, scientists announced. So... Is this the thing here? Does it burrow into something's head? Bloody hell. Who knew? Who knew? Now that looks like a rock painting out of an Australian cave. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? On first glance. Aussies, back me up here. So it says, resembling a colourful pancake. I never eat a pancake that looks like that, folks. This new Nuni branch looks ready for the bizarre brunch. The sea slug is one of hundreds of bleh, sea slug. Oh my goodness. Potentially new species discovered. Species. Remember David Bellamy in the UK? I'm oh, look at this species. That's what he used to say all the time. I don't know why I've taken up the David Bellamy species thing, but eh, we'll go with it for now. Who knows? Who knew? Who knows? I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Do you get, do you get the distinct impression I'm freaked out by these weird beasties? Because I'm not feeling good here. That creepy kind of crawly feeling going on. I'm just saying. Oh, come on. Right, come on. There's nothing weird about this frog, surely. It's just a frog. Maybe, is it one of Alex's frogs? No. <sighs> Count Frogula. It's a vampire flying frog. Okay, now this takes frogs that fly and bite you. Now I'm scared. So the mountain jungle of Vietnam are home to a new breed of vampire, a flying tree frog dubbed uh, Racophorus vampirus. Hmm. First found in 2008, the two inch long, it's longer than it sounds, ladies. Amphibian is known to live only in the southern Vietnamese cloud forests, where it uses its webbed fingers and toes to glide from tree to tree, scientists said in January. So unless you're going to Vietnam for a, a, a safari or a, a jungle type holiday, I don't think you need to worry about the Count Frogula just yet. But I can't promise you. It's, oh, you see these, uh, you see when you get into the microscopic little bugs and beasties that live around houses and in your beds. And, that is terrifying. Can you imagine something the size of a human that looking like that walking off a spaceship? That's that's the face suckers that are coming for us, folks. I'm telling you. That's what they're not telling us. That's what aliens really look like. And they're not in space. They're all around us. They are. So what is this thing? A devil worm. Lots of devilish stuff here. A devil worm has been found miles under the earth. The deepest living animal yet found. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Well, I don't know. Remember, this is 2011. I think our new beasties in Antarctica might trump this. So uh, that thing's kind of grossing me out. It's not good. What? What on earth's name is this? For a star, it looks like a plant, right? 
the big lipped seal or the big lipped sea worm sporting a bright fuchsia hue this new species of deep sea acorn worm has recently found some or was recently found 8850 feet in the mid atlantic ridge the colorful creature has extremely long lips that help it snag prey in place where food is scarce, according to a November study. That's the least scary one, right? Until it gives you a big giant wet kiss. But next up. Okay, okay. Uh, don't get kidded on by its uh, nice little look here. But I tell you what, folks, these are the type of things that I think alien are going to look, I think aliens are going to look more like this, more like octopi, um, more like the little beastie we see in the face sucker. I, I think that's, that's the thing. So what is this? Pink mini jellyfish. Now, Jimmy Jeans keeps messaging, so Jimmy. Let's see. Now, I'm streaming. There we go. We'll get back to you in 10 minutes. There we go. Keeps Jimmy happy there. I'll give him the link so he can join in for the next five minutes. You'll probably see uh, Mr. Microcosm enter in the chat room, maybe. Um, well, I'll type back to him. Don't be sorry. Just don't be a dick. I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm terrible, isn't I? <laughs> I'm in a right boisterous mood today, I'm telling you. Don't be sorry, bro. There we go. There we go. Um, the Hanar from Mass Effect. Polly, good shout, dude. Good shout. Um, where are we? Oh, no, I've lost my page. Ah, there we are. So, off the Florida Keys, hundreds of stinging tentacles dangle from the pink mini. A pink mini. Yep. A pink mini, a new species of jellyfish with a taste for other jellies that was discovered in January. Like other species of the genus Drymonema, Drymonema, yep. The new jelly has an appetite for moon jellyfish, which the predators feed on almost exclusively as adults. Wow. Things things are get bizarre in nature, don't they? They do. They they take what the heck? Now hang on, nobody discovered this dude, right? See, it, it took me on to the wrong hang there. You see, I knew that had taken me on to something totally different. We haven't just discovered a snowboarder, folks. Snowboarders have been known about for a long, long time indeed. So we don't need to worry about that. But I'm gonna come into the chat room, see what you people in there are saying. Malaya, Malaya, Malaya. Yes, indeed. Now, hang on. Um, when will I check something? Okay, okay. Um, give me two secs, folks. I'll be back. I'll be back. There we go, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. There's nothing up, we're all good, we're all good, we're all good. So Malaya gave me a story today that I'll be kicking off the main show with in 25 minutes. It's a nice little feel-good story about a shop that is close to her. Um, so Malaya, I'll be bringing that up on the show today. I'll also be bringing up Dybbuk boxes. I'll also be getting into, where else is it now? Hang on, hang on. I'll also be getting into... Scientists making a magic carpet. Yep. Creepy stories about AI. How Tesla and Marconi were talking to aliens, perhaps. 
um, and, and lots more, and lots more, and all of you as well. I want your creepy stories on the Kev Baker show tonight, because we're kind of going full woo. We're going to have the nice little story that Malaya shared today over on Twitter. We'll kick off things with that, and then we're going to go full woo, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Now, I've got some woo dug up there, but we'll also live deep dive as well over on the main show. But I want to see what you good people out there in YouTube land are saying. So we've got Mammoth still in there. Jules is saying hello, everyone. A big hello to you, Jules. Big hello. Um, we've also got Rose in there. Crystal Shaman. Got to go. You stay safe, Crystal. Stay safe. Tracy Kane, and um, we've also got Mike D for life. Good to see you. And um, who else is kicking about in here? Dub Xylon, Jimmy Jeans, and Kev Lappin is the best thing ever. How funny was that the other night? I, I had to go back and watch that again. And do you know what happened when I watched it again? I pissed myself laughing again. Not literally. I, 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 didn't, I didn't actually wet myself. Anne says I did, but that's just a vicious rumour. I didn't wet myself, okay? I promise you, but that was funny. Oh, boy, that was funny. I can't even remember what started it. But, eh, dang, dude. A good laugh is what you need at times, right? My octopus overlord, says Cine Monk. That's going to be the follow-up to my, eh, my octopus teacher. Yes, it's going to be my octopus overlord. I agree with you. I agree with you. So, uh, Spooky Andy, how you doing, man? Dude, you've, been, you've either been working hard or you've been playing hard. Uh, either way, hopefully it's playing hard, because I don't want to think of you working too hard, brother. Not even a slight dribble, Kev. Maybe, maybe. Now, I'm, a, I'm willing to go that far, MacGyver. Can I just call you MacGyver? What a great name. Why, thank you, Anne. Why, thank you. So listen, folks, listen, it's nearly that time for me to go and get ready for the radio gig over on TFRlive.com and then also on TalkStream Live. And if you're in our Discord server, you can get there via that as well. And coming online in the next few days and weeks, we're going to be having KBS merch. Yes, indeed. So if you want to adorn yourself in the attire of KBS, the mind boggles who on earth's name would do that. But if you want to, it's coming your way real, real soon. Why? Because we're stepping up the game in 2021. Yes, we are. And I hope, I hope, I hope all of you are having a great day out there. I'll stay for another five minutes, folks. Give me two secs. I'm just going to put on some tunes. And I'll come back and see what you're saying in the chat room. I know it's Mac Vicker, but I think Mac MacGyver. Alan, come on, man. MacGyver's a cool name. I don't like the new MacGyver, though. They remade MacGyver and they killed it. You're the old MacGyver, Alan. I know it's Mac Vicker. It's all good, but Mac MacGyver? Crack and show. Two Eldridges. Uh oh. One Eldridge was bad enough. That's the USS Eldridge, ladies and gents. Oh, Alan. Alan, that's, that's the thing. From time to time, I've never been diagnosed as being dys... Whoa. I've never been diagnosed as being dyslexic, but I think I am. Usually when I'm putting together posters or I'm putting together titles for shows, it happens all the time. I, I kind of transpose one letter in front of it. It goes all wrong. So, yes, there's definitely a touch of that involved, um, Mr. MacGyver. But, but, 
come on, MacGyver's a cool show, and I think it's a cool name. And you know, you know you're special when you get your own nickname on the KBS stream, right? That makes you one of the special ones. Not special ones, but special ones. Yes. So, until next time, which will be all of 19 minutes, I'll be over on the radio show. But I'll be back tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll do a longer pre-show stream. I promise you that. We will go for a couple of hours tomorrow on the pre-show stream, because why? Well, I've got lots of links backing up here, folks. There's lots of stuff to talk about. There really is. There's a lot going on in the world, a lot to be excited about, and a lot to be looking through the cracks of your fingers at as well. And on top of that, the woo in 2021, it is going through the roof. So, I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you're new here, click subscribe. If you're regular here and you want to go the extra yard, click join. You'll be into our VIP lounge. And with that said, I think, I think my work here is almost done. Strange life forms in Antarctica. And if they can take hold there, ladies and gentlemen, well, where else can life survive and thrive? And for today, keep your mind open. Keep looking for the woo, but not to the point where your brain turns to black goo. I will put a link for the disco into the chat room right now. Stand by, folks. Stand by. Now, there's one rule. There's one rule. One rule only. It's a simple rule. It's a rule that my good friend Joe Joseph taught me. There shall be no douchebaggery. No douchebaggery at all. No captains of the douche canoe are allowed in the Discord. Any, any instance of you being a bam and you get kicked straight back out of there. Why? Because we've got one of the best discos in the world and I don't want it getting broken. So please, 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 if you want to join, be open-minded. Leave your belief systems, your politics and religion at the door because it's just crazy, crazy woo all the way on KBS over on Disco. I am out of here.